to class six of How to Collage Quirky Characters. This class is entitled Put a Bow on It. And the reason it's titled that is to just put all the finishing touches on our pieces. And I promise to show you how I use the computer and scan images and create some of the other things that I showed you in previous videos. Things like the tag that we made out of Tenny Bird, the envelope and card that we made from Home Sweet Home, the stamps that I put together for Rosebud, this is a little bag, more stamps, and then the postcard of Tenny Bird. And you can also do an ATC uh, the same way. It's just a matter of size. So pretty much you put these all together the same way. The trick is taking the image and getting it sized. So we're going to go to the computer today and I'll show you how I bring in the image using PowerPoint and put my images all on a sheet so that I can create these other things. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to be working in PowerPoint today, and I just opened my version of PowerPoint, which is 2013. And you may have a different version, but most of the things that I'm going to be showing you are the exact same. They may be in a different place, but you'll be using the same concepts. So the first thing you get to do when you pick up, when you open PowerPoint, is you pick the type of presentation. We want just a blank presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up, and you'll have a screen that looks like this. And one of the first things I do is I get rid of these little boxes. So you can just click on it. You can see how there's little, um, it's highlighted, and there's little little tiny squares. So you just highlight that, and then I delete it and go ahead and click again on that little line and go ahead and delete it. So now I have just a blank screen and it just makes it a little bit easier to use. So after we've got our blank slide, the next thing we want to do is insert our graphic, our image, our quirky character in this case. And we've scanned our quirky character and we've saved it on our hard drive. And so now we want to go get it. So we're going to insert picture. And you have to find where you put yours. I know where I kept mine. And, and scan documents. And we'll go ahead and we'll start with Rosebud. So I pick her and I insert her. Okay, so there she is. So you can see this was pretty much my scan bed. I put her in one corner and it scans everything else and I want to get rid of all of this blank space. There's no need to really keep that. So what you want to do is you want to go up to your picture tools and there's a crop button that will appear and it may be in a different spot for you but what you're really looking for is crop. So go ahead and click on that and when you do there's these little handles here, these little black lines that will allow you to size your image. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all of this white space here. So I'm going to click on that and I just drag it in to where I want it. Just like that. And then up here I have just a little bit that I want to get go ahead and get rid of. And then I'm going to go down a little further and I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to Pull that up to right, right to where I want it. And then over here, there's, if you can't see the line, it's probably because it's really close or you may have lost your crop. So if you just see these white squares, you've lost your crop. So just go back up there and click on crop and go ahead and find that little line. And I'm just going to bring this back in. Okay, so now I've cropped my picture, and when I click over here, it's going to be, there's Rosebud all by herself. So now we want to size this, and depending on what you're going to make, that will determine 
the size of your image. So when you click on this, in this particular version, there is the height and the width in inches. I also have turned on my rulers across here and down here so that I can also size my image. So you could either look here or here. And on, I think, older copies of PowerPoint, it actually, as you start to size your image, it will show you the inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and size an image. So you have, when you click on the image, you have this little box that goes all the way around it. And the thing about sizing an image, it's important to grab a corner. So see how I'm, let me just, let me make this a little bigger for you so you can see how I'm going to grab a corner. So I'm going to grab a corner here, and you see how it turns into the diagonal arrows? When you do that, it preserves the um, dimensions of the picture, so the height to the width as you currently have it. Otherwise, it can get really elongated um, and, and not look right. So it's important to always grab a corner. doesn't matter which one, just grab one of them. Click your mouse, your, your left button, and hold it down and start dragging your image in. And see how that makes it smaller? Same thing when you want to make something larger. So let me back out just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going again, I'm going to grab my corner and let's, I'm going to watch the size here. And I know that, let's, let's look at, so if we do this, we want to do that image. And this is one where we sort of play with the size and what we might want. This particular image is three by about two inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to be watching that height. So right now we're at 3.96 by 1.99 by two. I might want it just a little bit smaller. So now I know it's three and three eighths. You can see it here by 1.7. Or you can go up here and just you click on your image and you hold your left mouse button down and drag it. And I just sort of put it right here up by the ruler, and I can see that it's you know just over one and a half with a 1.7. And if I want to bring it over here. I can see it's just over three inches tall. And that's how you size your image. So it's it's really simple. You just have to decide how big you want your image. And it's kind of a, you have to play with it a little bit uh, to get what you want. Now, the stamps, this is the one I think everybody's been wanting to see on how I do the stamps. And it's super simple. So. What you do, let's go ahead and click off that. We'll leave Rosebud right here. So what we want to do is insert a box or a shape. And in this case, it's a shape. Okay, so you want to look for something like that. And you want to look for a box, a square. You just click on that, and then it allows you to draw whatever size box you want. Okay? So you may have noticed that I went up here so that I could see how big of a box I was getting, whether it was going to be two inches and then go down by two inches. And again, you can watch your little box over here as well. And you can decide, do you want a square? Do you need it um, like an oblong? And in the case of Rosebud, I didn't put the whole image on. I just put part of it. So I went with a square. Now um, let's go ahead and, and do that one more time. So I'm going to insert and I'm, going, I'm looking for shapes and I want the box. And I'm just going to just draw 
Well, I don't think I picked a box there. Hold on. <laughs> Insert, shapes, and the box. Okay. Hold my left mouse button down and just draw my square. And I'm just right now I'm going to draw a square and see if I like that. Okay. And then I'm right clicking and I'm going down to format shape. And what I'm trying to do now is I want to take out my fill. And I pick no fill. And I'm going to leave the line around there. And what I'm going to do is click on that line and I'm going to change it so that it's a um, dotted line. That way it looks a little bit more like a stamp. So I click on that line and you can see I've got that highlighted around and I right click again on my mouse and I'm going to go down to Format Shape. And mine just happens to pop up over here. Yours may be in other places. But what you're really looking for now is the line. And I go down and I'm looking for the dash type. And that's what I use. And you pull that down and you can see the various lines over here. And I just pick one of these. And let's go ahead and we'll pick that one. And it will change that um, to, the, to the dash line. Now um, I'm going to change the color to black. And I, the width is how heavy of a line that you want. And I keep going up until I'm happy with the way the line is. And I'm going to go about two and a half points. You see how I have a nice line around there now? And uh, I think that's about it as far as what you need to do. So now what I'm going, I'm, I'm looking and I see I have, I can look right up here and see if I click on this. I've got about two inches. Uh, my box is about two inches, which is a little bigger than I want for a stamp. So I'm going to grab that corner and just drag it in a little bit so I have more of a stamp. Okay, what I want to do is I want to make a copy of Rosebud. So I'm right clicking. Again, in Windows Space Things, right clicking does everything. So I'm copying it and then I'm going to just paste it. Or you can do a Control C, click on her, do a Control C and a Control V. Okay, now I'm going to basically crop this picture so that it fits in here because I don't want everything. If I try and fit Rosebud in there, you can see she's going to be extremely small. That's just not going to work well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to crop her. So remember we went up, to, up here to Picture Tools. There's my crop. And I'm just going to bring... There's that black line again. I'm just going to go straight up to about how much I want of her to show. Okay, and I went about half the flower, and that's it. And now I'm just going to size this picture to fit inside my stamp. And you kind of just sort of guess here and see if you've got it. And you just move, hold your left mouse down, your left mouse button down, and just move it over. So there, I've, I think I like the way that looks. I'm going to leave it just like that. The other thing I do is I draw a box. So you hold your left mouse down and draw a box around it, and it will highlight everything in there. And I want to group that. And you have a group button over here that you can just pull down. You say group. And what that does is it treats it as a whole. So now it's one piece. The, both the picture and the box are grouped together. And then I do that because if I want to make several copies I can just control C and control V and I can line them up and I can get several, just control V, I can get several of them on a sheet. And for me I try and get as much as I can on a sheet when I'm printing. So that's how I do the stamps. And it's how I size my images for anything that I need. Whether if I want, you know, something this size, then I just kind of guesstimate how big I want it and size it that way. So it's all about playing 
and seeing what you like. Now, I generally use a Mac, but I know most people use a PC, which is why I'm showing it to you this way. And a Mac has just, its variations are a little bit different, but the same kind of concept. The other thing I want to show you is how I take my Pinterest pictures, which is basically the same idea, and scale those down. So give me a second and I'll get that brought up. Okay, so I still have a blank. I got rid of my images and I shrunk this down so that you could see the full screen of the slide. So let's go over to uh, my Pinterest board, Quirky Images, and how you get there is going to be different for everybody. But here's my board and I have a lot of images here. If you've had an opportunity to go out here and look around, um, it's there's a lot of them out there. So let's go ahead and pick this one. So what I do is I click on the image and it comes up like that. Now if you are in on a Mac, you can actually just drag this image over to your um, PowerPoint. But with uh, PC it's a little bit different. You have to copy it. So again, you go to your mouse. You just have your image up there. Right click your mouse and you want to copy. And then you want to go back to your slide, however you go back there, and you want to paste. And for me, it's a, I'm just going to do a control V. Now, this is a good size picture. It's 6.9 by 5.8. You can see it's quite large. I don't want him that big. And if you want to crop some things out, again, you can go to your picture tool, go to crop, and I do this frequently because I don't keep I don't keep the background, so I just go ahead and start cropping this so that I can get as much, got to grab that black handle again, get as much on a page as I can. Okay, so I just move him over there, and I'm going to shrink him down a little bit, and let's go back to the Pinterest page. We'll grab another image. Let's use this one. Again, click on the image just once. It comes up. You want to right click and copy. Then I go back to my slide. I paste it. And you can see this one is small. It's 3.3 .3 by 2.28. So what if I want it bigger? If I think I'm going to... So I click on it and then I start pulling that, that handle. And if I, when I think it's a size that I like, I just move it into place. You can move it anywhere, but and so that I can get as much on a sheet as I can. Okay, let's do one more. So we'll go back here. Let's click on this guy. See, he's very large. Right click, copy, back to your PowerPoint. Paste it by Control V, and he's got a lot of area that a lot of white space. I don't need that, so I'm going to crop it. Again, grab that black handle, go over, and I'm just getting in as close to him as I can. Okay, just like that. Let me show you one important thing. If you don't know PowerPoint or if you're not really familiar with Microsoft, there's a back button here. This is your undo button. If you do something that you don't like, you can continue to hit undo. But let's just go back and do that. Again, I want to make him, let's say I want to make him smaller. So I'm going to grab that corner and I'm just going to shrink him down until I'm happy. Hold the left button down and you can move him all around. Okay, just like that. Very simple. So let me show you what happens if if you don't grab the corner and you start pulling. You see how he gets fat? And you can go this way, which can be okay sometimes if you're going for a look like that. But if you want to keep the ratio correct, you've got to grab the corners. So I'm going to go up here to that 
undo button and I'm going to undo that and undo that and you see he's back to the size. And then again I can grab the corner and make him large or small, however big I think I want him. And it really is helpful because you can look at these measurements and go, okay, that looks like a size that I want. And then you just print it. And this is how I put my Pinterest uh, graphics on one page and get them to the size that I want. And then using scan documents like we did with our quirky characters, again, you have those files. You can size them to anything that you want. And it's really helpful to have that. So I hope this was really helpful for you guys. I know it's a quick tutorial on PowerPoint. And uh, there are other options out there that you can use, but PowerPoint is the one that I use when I'm uh, manipulating my graphics. So I thought I'd take you back to my journal, my Traveler's Notebook magazine journal, and show you um, how I've got my images in here now. And um, these are not done. What I would do as far as putting a bow on it is I would continue to doodle, add any words that you think you might like. You've got a lot of open space in here, so you could, you can leave it like this. There is nothing wrong with this. Or if you just really want to go in and start adding your pen work, you can do that. You can see right here, I put Rosebud's name, I just started doodling, and I'm not sure what else I'm going to do, but it's one of those things that's nice once you have it in your book, then you can, whenever you have some spare time, if you want to do it when you're sitting in front of the TV, you can just play in there, and it's, you know, it's fun to do that. Again, both of these now are in my journal, and I will be adding to them, um, you know, over the, over the months as I start thinking of things that I want to put in there. So that's about it. Um, one thing I didn't tell you about the stamps is that I use a Xyron and just run these through so that I can just cut them and then they're self-adhesive. So they, they make it like a real stamp, even though these are faux stamps. And I think that's it for now for this series. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a ball. I've had so much fun putting this together for you. I hope you learned something by using the collage sheets to help you see things differently. And then by going through the magazines, again, just things that you can add in conjunction with the collage sheets that will help you build quirky characters that you can use in your journal. You can use it on mail art, zines. There's so many things you can do with it. Now I'll be coming back with another video. Um, the next one up will be the flip of October. And following that will be a new friendship journal idea. And it's going to be using what I'm going to call cheater collage. And we'll follow up with that. It's going to be super fun. You're going to love it. So until then, I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.